So again, I'm uh, Phil Muddle with the uh, Arizona Architecture Foundation, and thanks for uh, having me here today to talk a bit about a couple of the travel uh, scholarship programs that we have uh, that uh, hopefully most of you are eligible for and uh, might have interest in. Um, the uh, Arizona Architecture Foundation, Foundation, just as a little background, we were actually celebrating, we started in 1983, um, and so we're celebrating our 40th anniversary. This year. But really, the goal of the foundation is to support professional architecture, students of architecture, and preserving the heritage of Arizona architecture. It's been our, our three primary goals. But today, we really want to talk about two travel prize options that we have. Um, the first is the Sean Murphy Prize. Uh, the Sean Murphy Travel Prize um, began in uh, 1990. Um, it is a $5,000 travel award uh, for students of architecture. And through its, the eligible students include third year undergraduate architecture students and first year MR students, as well as uh, second year three plus MR students. So it's essentially any of those that are coming back to ASU the following year are eligible to submit for these travel programs. The Sean Murphy Prize, we've had people that have traveled all over the world over the next one. Over the 32 years that the program has been operating, we've had students that have gone to 48 countries, six different continents, and really able to study anything that you choose to study. Um, if you look at the next one, kind of highlights some of the places that people have gone through the years. I was fortunate enough to be the first recipient of this award in 1990. And from the, about the last 20 years, I've been helping the foundation to uh, administer the scholarship. But I can tell you from personal experience what a life changing opportunity it is the opportunity to be able to write your own independent travel program, go anywhere you want in the world, and study what interests you in terms of architecture, urban design, and, and the built environment. Um, so, you know, these are just a handful of destinations that people have gone to. Many of them you'll recognize, um, but we've had students that travel to Antarctica and were studying temporary structures in Antarctica. We had a student who traveled to Mount Everest Base Camp and was studying what you would call temporary cities um, in Mount Everest Base Camp. And then some that are more uh, uh, kind of traditional uh, to be expected, you know, we have students that travel to Switzerland and study only Peter Zunkar's architecture and was able to meet with him at the studio. So it can be very focused or it can be a little broader. It's really up to you to define. I think um, in terms of the process, we have kind of a two-stage process for this travel proposal. The first is to submit a written travel proposal. That's the first thing you would have to do. Um, and then there's a short list that's created and, and then an interview panel, and then the award would be made uh, in March of this year. The submittal requirements, um, there's a, a written document that should have been sent to you in email. If you don't have that, um, we'll make it available following this meeting that kind of outlines all the requirements. But it's a very, we try and keep it fairly simple. It's a brief proposal submittal. It's a five page uh, submittal that outlines your travel objectives and really focusing in on what you're trying to accomplish with this travel program. It outlines roughly what your itinerary is and then a travel budget. And you can spend more than $5,000 if you want. Uh, that's if you want to put some of your own money into it. But $5,000 is what the foundation supports. So we have students that have done that. The dates, um, we had originally intended for this to be due on February 1st, but since we were a little late in this meeting schedule, we're going to push that back two weeks. So travel proposals will be due on February 15th. And the goal would be to notify the shortlisted students by February 20th. And then we would be doing interviews on March 2nd. And I believe you guys are on spring break the following week. So we we're trying to get it all finished before you guys go on break. The agreement that you would make if you're awarded the prize, it's pretty easy. Uh, 
the only thing you're committing to are these two things. You have to come back and do a presentation the following year here at the design school, and we have students and professionals that come to that event. And then the other thing you're committing to is to complete your travel within the calendar year. You have to travel uh, sometime within the 2020 calendar year. Most students choose to travel in the summer. We've had a handful of exceptions, like the young woman who traveled to Antarctica. For obvious reasons, she didn't want to go in our summer and their winter, so she chose to go over the um, winter break. Um, this is you know, a slide from the uh, event that we had this past November. We had three presentations this past November. You know, uh, Madison, who traveled to Norway, uh, Paula, who traveled to Colombia, Spain. And then we also have a professional travel program we do with Andrew who traveled to uh, Morocco. So some of the video footage you're seeing uh, in any of these presentations. And then we had a second travel prize that we just started last year. Uh, we had a donor, uh, Mr. Hirschberger, who uh, contributed money towards the second travel prize. Um, this travel prize is a $2,500 travel prize. Um, so it's uh, a little bit less money and has a slightly different focus. The focus of this uh, travel prize is really intended to get students to travel to European countries that have a similar climate to ours, so a hotter, uh, more arid climate. These define Italy, Spain, and Greece as being travel destinations or other European countries that have similar climate. And it's really focused on studying urban places. So it's a slightly different focus, or I should say it's a, a slightly more narrow focus than the Schoenberg Prize, which is really open-ended. Um, the Hirschberger Prize is a little more focused from an urban design perspective. The submission requirements are identical to what we talked about for the Murphy Prize. So it's a five-page proposal, same type of selection process. We're doing them all in parallel to try and simplify the smell process for you. Objectives, travel outline, travel budget, they are identical. What we talked about for the very few price. And the schedule matches up as well. And the agreement is the same. Um, you would be doing the presentation and traveling during this calendar year. So a couple of things that I just want to highlight in terms of what we've seen in past years that make for successful proposals. Um, if you're going to submit the thing that we are looking to be looking for in terms of selection committee, um, number one is looking for impact. We want to understand what this travel proposal is going to do in terms of moving your education forward. What's the impact going to be on your education? So the more clearly you can spell that out in your travel proposal, the more meaningful it is to us. It allows us to understand what that award is going to mean to you as an individual. The second is that we try to find ways for students to share their travel while they're traveling, whether that's the blog, social media, or finding ways again, to share that impact with other people so that uh, it's not just an experience for you, it's an experience that other people will take part in. Um, focus. We, we really discourage from people from doing kind of this grand trip where you're going to, you know, 10 different countries in 10 days and you're not really getting an in-depth experience in any of them. It's really important to me that you have a kind of rigorous and disciplined travel proposal to where you're getting a more in-depth experience in the place that you're choosing to go. So quite often it's more effective to choose one destination or two destinations and spend as much time as you can there as opposed to spreading it out over a broad area. And that, that kind of ties into that kind of immersive experience and how long you can stay there. We've had students in the past who have tied it in with an international internship where they might do an internship in Barcelona and then they spend the entire summer traveling to different areas around that region. Um, so that is an option, but again, looking for you to be creative about how you can kind of maximize uh, the use of the resources. And then lastly, I think the faculty that you have here at the design school are such a great resource in terms of like 
being able to bounce ideas off of them and get feedback from them to critique your ideas on the travel proposal. So we just encourage you to really try to take advantage of that um, and get the feedback from the fact that you can just put some of your thoughts on ideas. So that's really what we have today. I think if you want to open up for any questions that you may have, I'm happy to try to run through those. But I think it's really a great opportunity, and I hope that uh, you all consider it seriously. Maybe the travel proposals. Any questions? So is this for current for students or for students for next year? So if you are in your second year currently, you would be eligible to submit for this next year. Unfortunately, you can't submit this year. And it's the same if you're a fourth year student and you are continuing on to the master's program here at ASU, then you would be eligible to submit next year. You're not eligible to submit this year. Other questions? Yes. So, uh, we have a travel plan that will fit within the duration of the challenge. That's a great question, Paul. And I think the goal would be yes, it would be ideally if you. If you, can, if you have a travel proposal you're interested in, it fits within the Earth Shorter Prize under a $2,500 budget, and then you have a variation of that which expands it to maybe you're staying longer and seeing another destination, and you're expanding to that $5,000 budget, you can basically submit the same proposal with just modified budgets or uh, for multiple prices. So yes, they need two opportunities um, it's kind of the same or less up to her. Any other questions? Great. All right, thank you again for coming. I really appreciate your time and I uh, hope to uh, see your proposals in a few weeks.